Hello everyone. Today we are talking about onions. Onions, onions, onions. We've got three different varieties of onions here that we got from, as you can see, from Haas Tools. Um, and we're going to be planting those today and tomorrow. We've got uh, 300 onion plants. Let me pull these out. Give you a good look at what they look like. Um, they're a little bit dry, a little bit, and a little bit worse for wear. At any rate, uh, we're going to be getting these in the ground hopefully today, if not today in the morning. And we are, uh, we've got three different types. Uh, one is more of a Vidalia type onion, which is awesome red onion. And uh, one of those onions that I forget what they call it, but it grows fat and short for uh, nice for slicing onions for uh, burgers at any rate uh, we're going to be doing pretty much what we did with the garlic putting in drip tape putting in the uh, row cover and uh, to keep down the weeds and we then will uh, be planting the onions as I just got done mentioning these uh, onions are a little bit look a little bit rough from the trip and uh, so what we're going to do while we're getting the beds ready is we're going to soak them in uh, a fish emulsion uh, fertilizer and i found that this stuff works great for any type of plant that you're going to transplant and even afterwards uh, put a little bit on each one of the plants after you've planted it so what we're going to do is um, put some water in a bucket and then we're going to put some of this in here and then we'll put our onions in there and let them soak while uh, we're getting ready to plant them. Note to self, when you're dealing with plants that have dirt on the roots, don't pull them out and drag them across your coffee cup. Got it. Okay, we've got the onions sitting in the solution of fish emulsion and water. I just filled up the water. I put the uh, onions in here and then filled up the water just so it's high enough to that all the roots can uh, soak up the moisture because uh, it seemed to me that they were uh, pretty dry. At any rate, uh, we've got these soaking and now let's get off down to the, the planting area in the garden where we're going to be planting these things. Down at the garden and here's where we planted the garlic. Uh, you can catch that in the garlic planting video uh, we did earlier. And the rest of the garden that we've amended with all kinds of uh, good stuff and compost. So we're basically going to be doing the same thing that we did over here. We're going to put stakes at the end of the, the rows and stretch a tape all the way down for... Uh, guidance on measurements and whatnot and then we will be making furrows putting in drip tape and we'll be planting actually we're going to be planting four different types along this edge over here we're going to put in egyptian walking onions the ones that were left over from this past season so we're just going to plant those right along the edge there and then from there over we're going to start with our weed barrier and uh, our rows we're going to do it the same way we did the garlic we're going to plant them on uh, one foot uh, we're going to plant them one foot apart with drip tape underneath them and we're going to plant them uh, one foot uh, not only one foot spacing but also one foot rows apart so we're going to see how that works i think that we won't have any problems because we will be amending the soil with some fertilizer before we plant and also the um, water uh, the drip tape underneath is going to help a lot so i think we're trying to do as much of a controlled environment as possible um, thunderstorms notwithstanding but th that's the goal to try to stay out of the garden as much as possible uh, when you get in there with trying to tear up weeds or take cultivate and do things um, at least I have a tendency to 
tear up the plants and so I'm just trying to do as much as possible to make it easier on me save some time and also make it easier for um, uh, the cultivation so here we go just wanted to make a quick note after cultivating this whole area was uh, potatoes in this past summer and after even all the cultivation the digging and whatnot that we did if you look right here that is potatoes coming up potato plants and we're in fact i was just doing a little bit of light raking on top here sweet potato that we missed so whenever you plant potatoes they they just keep coming back there there's some potato plants through here I think they'll die off in the winter and so uh, there's some right there some right there uh, they'll die off and with the uh, row cover on top of it uh, that'll take care of them I was in the garden today working on planting onions and doing a little bit of cleanup a little bit of uh, light raking and the Sun is just now coming up over the trees and I caught the light caught something just right and I can't believe it check that out the garlic is coming up several shoots coming up a little bit I think I got a little bit burned with the frost we had last night but very good I can see several of the holes where we planted that the that the dirt is um, being pushed up and so there's no doubt that there's a plant underneath pushing those up Wow I didn't expect that yet which uh, creates a dilemma not a dilemma but a little bit of a quandary about why the garlic in the greenhouse hasn't shot up yet hmm I'm gonna have to go investigate that okay well garlics are doing well we're looking forward to seeing those pop up all over 100% Well, I did some measuring of how much space that I've got here and how many onions I'm going to be planting. And I thought it was better to start over here next to the garlic and do what I was intending to do, which is, this is for uh, uh, weed fabric that's four feet wide and every foot it's got uh, a mark. And so I'm going to attach to the side of the row cover for the greenhouse i'm a greenhouse the um the uh, garlic and i'm going to put this right on top of it and put a staple in it like this and then we need to cut this off with the torch and i'm going to have basically a two foot space between these rows and i'm going to use that kind of as a walkway i know that's going to be tight but i'm running out of space here and i want to plant a lot of onions i have reasons behind that but um i would just gotta use as much space as possible trying not to use as uh, uh use up as much space with the walkway that may be a mistake but with the weed fabric here and not having to do a lot of maintenance in here i think that i can get away with it so here we go we're going to cut this then i'm going to lay it back mark the the rows and then put in the drip tape cover it up put in put in fertilizer then plant the onions uh, on top of it after we cut the holes in the weed fabric like we did oh there's another garlic coming up holes right here 
continuing on with planting our onions and putting in the drip tape we've got all three drip tapes attached to the line and we're just getting ready to test the drip tape you got to test it before you put it in uh, all these drip tapes are used and so we're just going to see if there's any holes in them got one of the trenches dug and we're ready to put that drip tape in there as soon as we finish our test welcome back now from the greenhouse where we have the hmm something's not working hmm that doesn't sound good we're walking back from the sprinkler controls from the greenhouse and let's see if we've got anything whoa look at that over there we got a gusher whoa two of them let's see what we got number one we need a splice right there and number two we need a splice right there the rest seems to be in good shape okay perfect we'll fix that we'll be right back as i mentioned previously in the video when i was doing the garlic and setting up the the drip tape you get holes in these you step on them you break them whatever and you don't want to throw away a whole big piece of drip tape and so what you need to be doing is have yourself some splices we have splices here and we will put one of those in where we need it in those two spots and we'll be right back okay a couple of words about repairing the drip tape when uh, you repair this you want to make sure that these white lines match up on both sides or pretty close because your emitters come out right there that's a good shot and the other thing because we are burning holes in the plastic blind which means uh, we're going to cover everything up put the plastic down then we're going to burn the holes we need to make sure that from this emitter to that emitter once we put the splice in there that it's still one foot apart or it's going to throw off all of the holes when you go to uh, burn the holes in the plastic so or the weed barrier so just a couple things to look out for if you're not uh, doing the, the way that that i do it then it's not as big of a deal but you got to make sure that your emitters uh, line up with one another also when you cut this make sure you cut it very straight it helps it to uh, seal better here when you put in the splice all right we've got uh the drip tape installed i got to clean that up a little bit there and tighten that up see what's going on there but that'll be easy had to replace the piece of drip tape on the middle on the middle line right there because it uh, turns out that it had actually two holes in it and once you get to two holes or beyond it has to be a special case in order to save it so i just replaced the that piece of drip tape and now we've got three pieces and it's only got one splice right there and it looks like it's doing well so we're uh, ready to lay the drip tape and cover it up be back with you in a minute all right we got number one drip tape in the ground and you notice it's not as deep as we planted the garlic uh, because you don't plant the onions that deep at any rate uh, you can also see here uh, we put a generous amount of 10 10 10 fertilizer in there now we're going to close up the row and get ready to do rows number two and three onions 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 okay here we go we have installed the drip tape there's the valves right here six seven eight nine each one of these holes i burned in here are one foot apart there are 32 holes in a row so 96 per type of onion that i'm 
going to be growing and here's something that you need to take into consideration if you are using a torch to cut these holes it's pretty simple but occasionally something like that happens what happens is the weed fabric actually catches fire and smolders and what happened is as i was moving down the line here i didn't see it and it just the fire just crept over here and uh almost caused a disaster so something to be mindful of when you're doing this so now what we're going to do is plant these onions and uh, put a little bit of uh, organic fertilizer on top of it we've put in uh, like I said, we put in the drip tape, we've covered the drip tape, we put in uh, some 10, 10, 10, generous portion of 10, 10, 10, because onions love their fertilizer. And covered that all up, and now we're going to go back through, plant, and put in some organic fertilizer. So here we go. Now here is the fertilizer we're going to be using. It's a pelletized uh, product from, uh, based out of its... Uh, based on chicken manure and here are the red onions that we're going to be installing uh, installing these are the uh, red onions that we're going to be um, planting and um, they were looking kind of sad when we got them in but I put them in some fish emulsion and let them soak overnight and um, they're not looking too bad now they've really perked up quite a bit so we're going to put these in the hole and then we're going to uh, put a little fertilizer on top later on uh, we're supposed to get some rain tonight but uh, we'll give them a little drink of water um, after we get them planted well we've got 96 transplants in the ground oh i missed one right there 95 soon to be 96 but um i ordered two sets of 60 so I ordered 120 plants. I planted 95. I've got all of these left over. And I didn't even touch the second set. So know anybody who wants some onions? Because I'm going to have a lot of them left over. I've got two more t uh, varieties that I'm going to be planting. And... This is a so the name of it is so fire. Uh, it's a red onion, and um, hopefully we're going to do a lot better than we did last year. Got some things in mind for these onions, and well, like I said, hopefully they come out right. On to the next variety. Onions, onions, onions. All right, I am finished planting the onions that I bought from Haas Tools. And we've got three different varieties here in the ground. First one that we've got here is called Vi... I don't know if you can see that. Vidora. It is a Vidalia-type onion. This next one is Sapello. And Sapello is a, um, I don't remember what the name of it is, Granix or something like that. It uh, grows really fat and really short for slicing for sandwiches. And the first one that I already planted that you already saw is called Sofire. And um, it's a red onion. Pretty good size well supposedly it's a pretty good size we'll see how it comes out you know as I was planting these I was looking at the holes that I was planting them in and I hope I have the problem of the onions are too big to pull out of those holes but we'll see how it goes as time marches on just a really quick note I don't know if you can see it on the video right there along with some others oh went out of focus when i stuck my finger up there right along here garlic coming up so so far so good as far as the planting method that i'm using there's one right there which is popping his head out 
looks like um, I've even seen some of the uh, garlic popping up that I replanted from this past season. So everything is looking good. I am really pleased with how this turned out. And when you're in this environment where you get like torrential rains and then you have droughts and then it gets hot and then you get little cold snaps, you got to do everything that you can in order to basically in con control the environment that your plants are growing in. So that's why we, <clears throat> or I amended the soil, put in drip tape on each one of these lines, put in, uh, like I said, a lot of compost, put in fertilizer before we put it, as we put in the drip tape, put in uh, an organic uh, chicken manure, that's guaranteed not to burn, hope it doesn't. And uh, on top to give them a quick boost and it will also break down slowly. Uh, covered it with weed cloth to uh, keep the weed pressure down. It also warms the soil, keeps the rain out, the torrential rains, and um, it allows moisture to uh, stay in the ground so things don't dry out. So it's just a more controlled environment, and that's what we're looking for here in North Central Florida. Well, I had an oops moment when it comes to the onions. Uh, I failed to get the bed ready for planting the Egyptian onions, and they're going to go right here in this spot. I'm not going to be too particular in uh, with them. Um, I don't have enough weed barrier because I use some in the greenhouse on the floor. I don't have enough weed barrier to uh, put in another one. So I'm going to use what I had left over from last year growing the onions. And they seem to do really well underneath this. So I will get the drip tape installed. And you can see I have the stakes in the ground. Just putting two tapes in here because it appeared to me that the Egyptian onions didn't really like a lot of water and um, I mean they like water of course but uh, excessive water makes them rot so we're gonna try to do it right put the drip tape underneath put in some fertilizer just like we did with the rest of the onions and then um, plant the three rows of the walking onions with just two uh, lines of drip tape. So I'm also uh, reusing drip tape that I had in the garden before. So that uh, is also helpful to uh, reuse. Back at you in a minute. All right, issue resolved. Got the drip tape in, fertilized underneath the blue lines here. And we're going to plant in between there as well. I'll add a little bit more fertilizer as we go, but we've got the uh, weed fabric down for the Egyptian walking onions. And so this is going to be total allium plot. And I'll plant some more over here on the side without any ground cover. And we'll see how they go. I might even put another uh, drip tape in here on the end and see how it comes out. At any rate, here we are and I will be planting the walking onions probably in the next couple of days. I've got them healed in inside the greenhouse in there and so they're doing just fine. And we will catch up with you later. All the other onions look like they're still doing well. We gave them a little bit of a drink and I'm going to open up the valves and um, Give them a really good drink so that they settle in. See you soon. All right, we are in the greenhouse, inside the greenhouse. And you can see that it is right at 94 degrees in here. Uh, it was getting close to 100. I opened up one of the sides and I opened up the front of the greenhouse. Uh, took down the front of the greenhouse in the greenhouse so that it could get some uh, air out of here. <clears throat> but you can see how warm it is inside these things because it is only 50 degrees outside. Finished with the onions. Hallelujah. 
these are the walking onions that we planted before we've got some some elephant garlic planted in here i just watered and fertilized them today these are the control group of the three different types of onions i just got those planted in here today and just give you a quick look at what's going on here with the plants that we transplanted uh, when a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago dinosaur kale we've got uh, red cabbage we've got regular cabbage this is uh, Chinese broccoli radishes and some bok choy and some other things growing in here so the uh, so glad to have the onions finished that was just quite a chore uh, you probably could hear the fan just shutting off the exhaust fan it's cycling just fine okay we're gonna go outside in the uh, outside garden and have a look at the onions there back out in the garden and I guess we'll call this the allium plot for now at any rate I don't know if I explained before but this clump right here are scallions that my wife planted uh, after she had uh, had a few left over she just stuck them in the ground and she's been cutting off uh, shoots and using those for green onions for quite some time um, adjacent to that is a walking onion right there and also down there were some walking onions that I, that I took off of the baubles on the top last season and they're doing just fine I planted the walking onions here just this morning and I've got an entire row of those going we've got three different types of onions from Haas tools the transplants that we purchased and we planted elephant garlic you can find that in a previous video and you can see it looks like all of the ones that we got from Haas Tools, with the exception of just a couple, have already broken the ground. That one's really up there. And some of the ones that we had left over from last year, which is in the first row there, they have also sprouted. And I'm pretty happy about that because they were looking pretty sad. There's another one that we had from last year and the garlic is really looking well really really good so that's it for the onion field so to speak or the allium plot and we'll give an update from time to time the uh, onions look like that they're surviving and standing up pretty well they were kind of droopy at, right after I transplanted them. We've uh, got a few left over in case some of them just don't make it. We had some really cold temperatures here last night and the night before. We got down almost to freezing. In fact, we had I had ice on the windshield this morning when I had to roll out of here. And But they look like they're doing all right. So far, so good. We also had a bunch of rain that came through here a few days ago, which helped settle the dirt around them. So we're off to a good start here. We're supposed to have some more rain again at the end of the week, and that'll take care of setting the, the uh, Egyptian walking onions in the ground too. The ground as I planted those today was really moist, so I'm not going to put any more water in there. We'll just let them sit, and then this weekend they'll get a real dose of, of rain. So we're all set. Finally.